SNES drunk. 1995 saw the release of three different Mighty Morphin Power Rangers games for the Super Nintendo, with a fourth title coming in 1996, each with varying degrees of success. There's the eponymously titled Beat'em Up, a second beat 'em up based on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Movie, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Fighting Edition, a one-on-one -on -one fighting game, and Power Rangers Zeo Battle Racers, a Mode 7 racing game. Real quickly here on a personal note, I did not watch the show at all whatsoever as a kid, it just did not click with me whatsoever, so if you're wondering how well these games represent their source material, I am the wrong person to ask, because I don't know. Let's start with the regular old Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. This is a pure side-scrolling beat-em-up with no 3D plane. You can pick to play as any of the five Power Rangers at the beginning of each stage, and you run to the right and beat up bad guys, beat up some more enemies, and run to the right, and there's a boss, and yeah. This game isn't bad, it's just incredibly boring, and it's clearly made to cater to Power Rangers fans at the time, but even now, even the biggest Power Rangers fanboy isn't gonna get a whole lot of value out of this one. There's seven long stages complete with a password system. You start out each as a regular person before something triggers you to change into costume and mysteriously put on 35 pounds of muscle. What is this, late 90s Major League Baseball? You get a screen clear attack, which is useful and helps mitigate the tedium, but if you die from the game, not from boredom, you start all the way back at the beginning. The game does have a nice payoff, at least. Once you complete the side-scrolling levels, the game transitions into a one-on-one -on -one fighting mode, and you get to fight as Alpha 5, the mech robot. That's pretty cool. The music in this game is also pretty good. But despite that, it's pretty obvious that this is a generic game thrown together to cash in on the Power Rangers' popularity, and the most damning evidence of that isn't just the boring gameplay, it's the fact that they didn't even bother to change the the women's Power Rangers sprite. It's the same as the men's, just as a different color. That's as lazy as it gets. So yeah, I'd avoid this one. You can do much better. Well, maybe only slightly better, because next we've got Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Movie. Now, like I said earlier, I don't know much about Power Rangers, but I've read that this game doesn't even really have that much to do with the movie, if you care about that sort of thing. As it is, this is a perfectly okay beat-em-up, as opposed to a dreadfully boring one like the last game. Here you fight as one of six different characters to fight through seven levels. Again, you can choose a different character each stage, but this time each level features two different planes to jump between, which is, uh, interesting, I guess. But why not just have it an open 3D plane like most other beat-em-ups? The main thing Power Rangers the movie, the game, has going for it is that it cuts a quick pace. You're always moving forward, enemies pop out from all sorts of different places, and there's a little bit of variety here with snowboarding and surfing levels. The locations are a bit more interesting as well. You fight on an aircraft carrier, a shopping mall, and a freight train. Again, you start out fighting as regular people, but enemies drop these lightning bolts that enable you to fill your power meter. At that point, you can morph into ranger mode, complete with the fan service cutscene and everything. Power Rangers the movie, the game, is decent enough. I mean, it's better in just about every way than the first game I went over, and it's a good enough beat em up with the second player. It's just not anything worth going out of your way to play or anything like that. Next we have Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Fighting Edition. Now this is more like it. This is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game where you fight as mechs and monsters, and no joke, this is one of the most fun and satisfying fighting games on the SNES. There's three modes here. The two-player versus mode, the trial mode, which is a single-player gauntlet, and single-player story mode, which unfortunately only gives you two characters to fight as. That's a bummer. But the graphics, sound, and presentation here are all top-notch. You really feel the weight of these monsters and mechs as they fight and do damage. The controls are pretty simple. There's eight total fighters with your typical Street Fighter two stuff, but once you get the timing down, you can pull off all kinds of crazy combos, which is always fun. There's a bar at the bottom that fills up as you fight. If you trigger it at the right time, you'll power up, and you can increase your power up to three times. One touch I like is that if both you and your opponent try and throw each other at the same time, it becomes a test of strength. So if you've triggered your power-ups appropriately, you should win every time. I just thought that was always kind of a nice touch. If this game looks familiar, it's because the developer Natsume later went on to use the same game engine for another licensed game, Gundam Wing Endless Duel, so if you like that game, you'll enjoy its predecessor as well. Sometimes all you need is just to have giant robots and monsters try and destroy each other. It's that simple. Last, we have Power Rangers Zeo Battle Racing. Not to be confused with the Super Famicom game titled Battle Racers. This is different. This is a combat racing game where you choose between eight different characters that each have their own vehicle, ranging from the quicker motorcycles to the sturdier race cars to the damage-dealing fighter vehicles. There's a one-player circuit and two-player racing, as well as a battle mode, which is pretty good if you're looking for a cheaper alternative to stuff like Mario Kart and Street Racer. There's your typical ramps and speed boosts and a total of 16 tracks. The big appeal here is that you can shoot projectiles to make people in front of you spin out, which suspiciously causes the same sound effect you hear in Mario Kart? 
but there's really nothing else that's all that unique or interesting here. Plus, this is one of those games where even in single player mode, you're racing in split screen with the rear view at the bottom, so that's a bummer. I'd only play this one if you're really sick of Mario Kart and Biker Mice from Mars and Rock and Roll Racing and Street Racer and you're still jonesing for more SNES Combat Racing. Anyway, that's all for now. I want to thank you for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.